Um, so my name is Emily Paquin and I work for uh, Erudi, which is a, um, a dissemination platform uh, that has been uh, founded in 1998. So um, we have now behind us the 20 years of uh, digital publishing. So this is our homepage. If you want to go see what we're doing, it's very easy. It's erudi.org. Um, you, you will see what we're doing. Basically, we are in between journals, libraries, and the general public. So we don't own journals, we don't publish journals, we basically uh, take uh, issues, we convert into XML to disseminate on our platform, and then we make sure that all the content is available in libraries, that has DOIs, that is uh, preserved on Portico, logs, and so on, and that everything is also available through Google for everyone uh, to have access to the content. So um, we are like Project Muse in the US, uh, Cielo in South America, or uh, Open Edition in, in France. Uh, as I said, we were founded in 1998. We're non-commercial, and our legal status is an inter-university consortium. So we were created at University of Montreal, and we are still really uh, rooted in, in the um, scholarly uh, communication system. We are now uh, recognized, we first uh, was, uh, as I said, created in Montreal, so uh, we were uh, mainly fr a French language uh, institution initiative, but now we are, we are a national research platform and we are uh, partnering uh, very closely with uh, the Public Knowledge Project and we have uh, the scientific director of PKP just there. <laughs> Um, on Erudi, there's about 190 journals. Uh, we have books, we aggregate theses for diff from different universities, and uh, we also have a preprint servers for uh, research reports. And now I'm going to jump into the commercialization opportunity. So we were created in 1998. Until 2006, everything was in open access. Uh, it was part of the principles. It was part of our mission. But the journals we were working with were struggling with the transition to, uh, op uh, to um, digital uh, publishing. So we started to uh, commercialize journals, but under a 24 months embargo. So all the archives were in complete open access and we were uh, selling to libraries or trying to sell to libraries uh, uh, the, the access to two years uh, the, of publication. We, uh, we were greatly um, helped in that in 2008 uh, by the Canadian um, government, especially from the Canadian Foundation of Innovation, which is a granting agency um, that, had, that decided, it's more complicated than that, but just for the so short story, that decided to help libraries purchase digital content. So um, from 19, uh, by, by then, um, we, uh, we have sold our content to all Canadian libraries. Uh, so it gave us a really great push uh, and um, it helped us uh, provide journals with substantial uh, royalties. Uh, and then the challenge that <laughs> led us to rethink the model, because of course, um, at one point uh, there was no more federal money uh, that go that was going back to that was flowing to to libraries to to purchase um, content. So so first we had to think what are we going to do to continue to sell our French language, mainly French language content, to uh, the, the Canadian libraries? And secondly, how we are going to um, comply to the open access policies that, that we know that we're, they were uh, upcoming uh, from the tri-council uh, agencies. Uh, so that was complex, but it was uh, also um, uh, strange. It was uh, that was we were in a strange posi position from um, from the commercialization push that I 
talked um, earlier. Because um, uh, the research libraries were um, uh, acting with us like if we were a big vendor. Even though 95% of the content was in open access, even though we were uh, uh, an inter-university consortium, even though the cost of collection was quite cheap, and the, the journals we were um, uh, supporting were also very small uh, uh, journals. Uh, and you can see that our annual budget is, um, is small with no margin profit because we reinvest everything into the system. And so, yes, um, we were uh, dealing with libraries like if we were Elsevier. And of course, uh, the 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 game is is not the same. So um, we uh, and this is my uh, literature background there that is uh, showing up. <laughs> we are we really um, sense that something was rotten in the state of Denmark. So what to do uh, from uh, from there? What what to do? Um, the APC model is, of course, a model that works very well to, to have uh, open access content uh, um, delivered out there. But in our context, as I said earlier, we don't own journals. It was not possible to change the way journals were working. Uh, so this is the first thing. Second thing is APCs uh, are not suited to the uh, humanities and social sciences ecosystem where the grants are not as high as in STEM. And three, and most of all, um, <laughs> we were uh, really in favor of the equity principle because yes, we are into uh, principles here. Um, uh, APCs uh, are um, help uh, richer, the, the richest to, to, to get their article published and, uh, and doesn't help uh, good research uh, to be um, published, even if, of course, there is good research published with a APCs. So uh, we felt that we had nothing to lose, so we've decided to dream. But we are really practical persons, so it worked. Uh, we decided to, um, to change uh, the, the nature of the relations we had with libraries, uh, to convert the commercial um, uh, relations we had uh, that were not really interesting for us for the reason I said into a partnership and this is a long process because changing relations is a long process. We have to identify the common interest uh, and we have to really understand um, each other and to build trust and it, take time. it takes time. So the, ba the, the, the principle of the, the um, partnership is um, to have a large number of libraries contributing a small amount of money to overall uh, be able to return to journals interesting royalties or partnership revenues. It, um, it helps to, uh, to ensure a cost control uh, because we, we have a fixed amount of new jur journal uh, added annually, um, because we are really transparent with our partners. We show them our um, books, you know, financial books and so on. Uh, and we offer them access uh, for text and, binding, text and data mining and so on. We uh, also uh, make sure that 100% of the, uh, the money that is coming from libraries is directly returning to journals. So 30% of the money we get from libraries is directly used to uh, finance the services we are offering to journals. And then 70% of the money is going directly back to, to journals. 
So our roadmap now, we have started in 2014, the, the, the pilot project. Now we are really into the partnership, so uh, we are um, trying to expand it. So um, we have lowered our um, uh, embargo uh, to a 12 months uh, embargo, and we will, rem we will keep that embargo until 2022. Uh, uh, the, the year we hope that uh, we will have converted almost every commercial agreements we have and have a, s a sustainable and a larger enough base, base of partners to be able to uh, completely get rid of the, uh, the embargo. So right now we have signed this year um, a partnership agreement with uh, the Canadian libraries for five years. We have signed an agreement for three years with France, for uh, five years uh, with Belgium. We are working with JISC and other European um, consortium also. And I want to I wanna finish my presentation on why OA is not enough and why APCs are not a viable uh, solution to the serial crisis. So um, this is um, uh, data uh, taken from um, an article published by several researchers, but by Vincent Larivière also, which is the scientific director of Erudit. So showing that right now, uh, it was in 2015, about 45% of all research was in open access. However, uh, and this is from uh, um, the UK, uh, we can still see that uh, that um, the the level of uh, um, cost or assumed by libraries is still increasing increasing by 60% from 2013 to 2016. So something is not going well in the system. And we think that it's mainly um, that we think we have to work together, to, to work mostly closely together, build trust in, with um, not-for-profit platforms, libraries, researchers, and so on. And uh, this is uh, a prize we have received from the American Library Association for uh, our bold endeavor into <laughs> partnership. Uh, yeah, partnership. Thanks. If you want to know more about the partnership, you can go see partnership.erudit.org. If there's any libraries, librarians here interested into the partnership, please, <laughs> you can, uh, you can um, reach us. Thanks. OK, is there any questions? Yes. Um, I've been very interested. I've been looking forward to this talk for many months. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I'll explain why. Okay. Uh, um, I'm from the University of Manitoba, and um, <clears throat> my colleague uh, in the research unit that we um, have started are attempting, like many institutions, to try and track APC discounts. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I'm actually thinking about a project that way. Because um, it's, it's a value to researchers. Um, but our big challenge is workflow. Um, how collections actually uh, keeps track of that, or they don't. Um, what kind of discounts, um, what kind of relationships we have um, that we can communicate to researchers, and, and of course keeping on top of that. I think um, our big challenge is that uh, within the libraries there's not a great communication um, between collections and other um, 
units within the same library system, meaning technical services and then liaison li librarians. And so for all those reasons, there's a lot of communication breakdown, a lot of time spent trying to um, go from the researcher to collections and back again to get that information. All to say, um, I think this is great, this partnership you have, um, but how to connect what you're trying to do in, your, in the, the journals you support as part of your non-APC model or, you know, whatever structure you have and then working with collections to try and make that communication about how your model works as compared to everyone else in the ecosystem and then get that to the librarians to get that to the researcher. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? Because mm -hmm. it is very complex and we need to fix it. Yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for your question. Um, one part of uh, the, the partnership we... <sighs> when we were thinking about the partnership, we, it, we were really concerned about what you were saying. Um, because we are a small team and to have something complex to manage was not possible. And we know that libraries are also in a, a difficult situation and they don't have the resources to, to manage APCs and so on. Um, to, uh, to manage and to, to move forward the partnership, we have uh, created Coalition Publica with the Public Knowledge Project. Uh, this is a sort of, it's the umbrella under which uh, the partnership is. Um, we have, it, it's new, it's, uh, we have developed that in uh, the spring of 2017. There's an advisory committee that has been uh, created this uh, fall, and we really want libraries to work with us. So um, we will have to think together of um, sort of a, 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 a cell or group of libraries able to, to communicate in their libraries what we're doing and the, the, the interests of that. So. I think it's um, it's an open question, but if you want to participate, if you want, you're really welcome to to help us. It's a uh, it's a major uh, challenge. <laughs> okay, uh, is there? Uh, much resistance or reluctance from the part of the small journals to go through to a full open access, you know, immediate open access. Because there was a few years ago, yeah. I uh, witnessed and so. And what do you do you use as a convincing arguments or mm -hmm. can you just talk yes, about there, that? Yes, there, there, there is resistance, of course. Um, there's some journals that, that are really convinced that open access is uh, good for them for the visibility, for the impact. And now there's more and more data that is showing that yes, it, th th there's an impact when you're in open access. Yeah, you have more readers, you have more impact, more visibility. So uh, when working with small journals, I think this is, uh, this is a major point to make, to say you're small, but you're in a platform aggregated, and then if you're in open access, you be, you, you will have a, a larger uh, com a reader community, and you need that to to have the grants. You need to to continue to um, to to publish, um, but to we know that going open access without uh, without any funds, without any financial resources, is not possible. We did a, a study with uh, um, financed by SHRC, which is a Canadian um, f uh, granting agency, that showed that uh, uh, um, in 2015, one third of the um, annual revenues of journals were still pr uh, coming from subscription. So it's 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 an important part of a small budget. So that's why we have a roadmap, a five years roadmap that we want um, uh, that we have developed uh, to be in full open access by 2022. That's that's how we manage the resistance of the journals that don't want to be or can't go in open access like 
from one day to another. We want, we want to still continue to provide them the same level of revenues that we are providing them uh, in 2022 when everything will be in open access. <laughs> um, okay. Can you describe a little bit about the kinds of journals? Are they print? Are they digital only? Uh -huh. are, um, do they have to be on your platform? It can, can it be a heterogeneous kind of platform play? Uh -huh. uh, well, the, it, it, we have every kind of journal. Some are only print. Uh, no, 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 no. Some are only digital. Uh, every Every journals are digital. Some still have print, of course. <laughs> um, but to be part of the partnership, they have to be on our platform because, you know, yeah, because libraries are asking for um, reports, stats, you know, and so on to be able to monitor the the usage. Uh, um. <laughs> what? Is that stuff you going crazy to a certain extent because you've got it in a kind of centralized workflow? Yeah. 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 Okay, thanks.